Hey, it's Carla Prusa, and today I am here with mixed martial artist, Mr. Christian Lowson, ahead of his Icon FC6 tilt against Nasty Nate Williams. Christian, before we get into the fight, let's talk a little bit about your career. How exactly did you get your start into MMA? Um, So when I was a kid, about four years old, uh, my parents brought me to the gym they were currently training at in Stockton, California. Uh, with Eric Shingu and I started doing Okinawa Goju and Jiu Jitsu with them and then from there we opened our own gym in uh, well first in Valley Springs California then Burson California and when we moved to Florida kept it going but just training in the different martial arts and stuff like that since a very early age and sticking with it until about uh, my freshman year when I focused purely on wrestling and then came back after high school. Um, and then just realizing I'm not as good at anything else other than it <laughs> really drove me to uh, the competition side of MMA. And now you're such a submission specialist. You've had so much success in your fighting career because of your jiu-jitsu. Is BG BJJ just something that you took to right away? Um, I don't know if I would say I took to it right away. Um, I mean, I lost plenty of matches as a kid. Um, I really, like, when I was hitting middle school age and stuff like that, I started grappling with adults, and there would be moments where uh, I'd get put in a situation where I felt stuck, like, like nothing could move, and I would get, like, claustrophobic feeling. And it really made me want to improve my jujitsu to a point where no one else could keep, make me feel claustrophobic if that made sense um and there there were times where different moves felt more natural than others but in general it was just a lot of time on the mats just ended up making it feel like second nature you know you've wowed a lot of people with your banana split uh finish um, you know, your last fight, your PFL fight, you know, you went for it in the first round. What's so appealing to you about that maneuver? You know, that's a very difficult maneuver. And uh, what's so appealing to you about it? So when I was wrestling through high school, uh, it was probably my number one way to pin someone. Uh, I found it a lot. And it's it's not that it's embarrassing for the other person, but if you can pull it off on someone, it's seen as a lot more intricate or harder to do than some of the basic moves and stuff like that, which made it more exciting to hit and more fun to pull off, uh, which I like having fun. So Now, you first pulled it off competition um, against Wesley Golden in your MMA career. Um, let's talk about that. Walk me through that finish. Were you looking for it? Was there just a good opportunity that came where you were able to hit it? And what was going through your head when you were able to finish the fight with it? Yeah, so actually at that time, I had not gotten back to starting to use it for submissions yet. Like uh, up to that, I hadn't been using it in training or anything like that. But when he went up uh, to his tripod when i had the back control with the one leg in i saw it and i just was like let me do this i'll break him down and then when i got there i heard him start to wince in pain and i was like i could actually finish this from here and when i did that i reminded myself i was like oh yeah this is a submission i can hit not just a wrestling move and it's fun so i started doing it a lot more in training after that fight and really making it my go-to again you know, once you were able to land that, what was the reactions like? Were you getting a lot of people going crazy talking about it? Yeah, no. Uh, after that, I, the, the reactions were pretty pretty nuts on all the different like social media platforms. And I think it was named like fourth best finish of the year on UFC Fight Pass for that year. Um, it kind of blew up. Like there was when COVID happened, there was like a list of 100, 100 fights to watch at home for uh, like on UFC fight pass. And it was like number one on the list or something like that. Like it was, it was fun to see it blowing up. up. Now, would you say has that maneuver kind of become one of your go-tos your signature moves, if you will? Oh, absolutely. Like uh, it's, it's a very fun technique to hit. And 
I feel it show like it's a lot of control and it's not like your basic rear naked chokes or something like that. It's it's a move that when done gets a lot more attention. And in training, I've definitely made it more of a go-to. It, like I said, it was a go-to for me in wrestling and I'm getting it back into my game for MMA and jiu-jitsu a lot more. Uh, especially it catches a lot of people off guard when they're not expecting it. Um, there's just like high level jujitsu people can get caught in it because they don't think about the setups that it's coming from, from a wrestling standpoint, they're thinking about more pure jujitsu setups. So it can even catch some of the higher level people off guard. Now you have already fought in some pretty big shows. You've had a fight in the Dana White contender series. You've had a fight in PFL, you know, already having that experience of the bigger shows um, has that made you a better fighter or at least let you know what it takes to fight at the highest level of the game? Yeah, so both um, good experiences, both different experiences. Uh, the contender was very um, it was very quiet. It was more of a uh, intimate show, which was a new experience for me that more intimate like not a lot of noise there's only a couple people cheering for you like that you brought in um no walkout music nothing like that it was just get in fight and uh that experience was really good because there's a lot of pressure but there's not a lot of crowd and then even the pfl fight i had was during covid where they weren't allowing crowds so even that was a small crowd in a big venue. Um, but just the cameras, the lights, the uh, the thought behind the events, like the way people think of the event being at a higher level, the opponent coming in, uh, trying to on TV beat me, definitely has a different feel to it. And I definitely think it makes me a lot more relaxed and loose after those experiences when I'm fighting. No, as you mentioned, COVID did things take, they took, COVID took crowds away from the sport. You know, even now fight nights are still done at the apex mostly. Um, do you prefer it like that? Or do you like fighting with the crowd? Do you have a preference there? Uh, I prefer with the crowd. Uh, I definitely prefer having a big crowd. Um, just the energy is different. Uh, the feel behind the fights is different. It's it doesn't feel so much like a uh, like a studio televised type deal. It feels more like a live event where the reactions are one hundred percent real. Like the PFL, there was times I was mid fight, I would hit like a punch or something, and hear like the automated uh, crowd noise that they would play, and it threw me off a little bit the first time I heard it, like in round one where I heard like this loud, like cheering sound, like from near the cage. And I'm like, what is that? Like, I know there's not that many people here. You haven't been in action since 2021. Um, are you itching to get back in the cage? And, you know, in this time off, um, have you perfected any aspects of your game or, you know, maybe made improvements to anything or added some new skills to your repertoire? Yeah, I mean, I'm just constantly training, building up every skill set that I have. A uh, couple of injuries derailed stuff here and there. Um, just like I broke my foot, lost a testicle, just different stuff in and out. Um, definitely kept me on and off the mats and not in peak form. But I'm, I've been itching very much so to get back into the cage and uh, get back to fighting. On December 2nd, you're going to take on Nate Williams. Um, overall, what are your thoughts on your opponent? Um, he's a good dude. Um, ha has a good ground game. From what I was kind of hearing from commentators during some of his fights, he's a collegiate wrestler and a jiu-jitsu black belt, which is always fun. Um, striking's decent. He's a very well-rounded fighter. Um, I think I'm better in each area and more well-rounded, but... Um, He's a good test, a good, a good fight to uh, challenge some of my strengths. Now, does it excite you when you get an opponent who is good on the ground, who has the BJJ, who has the wrestling? Yeah, it can be exciting. Um, like my last fight for the PFL, Jonas Flock was a collegiate wrestler as well as a jiu-jitsu brown belt. So we had a good exchange, a lot of scrambles, a lot of emotion. 
Um, you usually find with the higher level guys, when you do get to the ground, they don't just try to sit still and hold. So it tends to more action, not boring when it gets to the ground. Because I know there are a lot of stigmas behind jujitsu and grappling in MMA where when it hits the ground, people start booing because they don't think it's exciting because there is a lot of lay and pray that goes on. And my goal when I get to the ground is not to do that. I try to finish every time I'm on the ground. So having another high level grappler usually adds to a more fun grappling experience and a lot more action and not lay and pray. <laughs> Now, when you're going into a fight against someone who has a very good BJJ and wrestling skill set, is training camp a little different? Do you approach it differently? Um, Not really. I mean, I have good partners in both the striking and grappling to work with. Uh, and when I'm going into the fight, I don't try to look too much at my opponents and what their strengths and weaknesses are. I just go in and try to input my strengths and just bring the fight where I want it. Um, like, like you said, he's a good grappler. So there is times where maybe I test the feet a little bit, see how we stack up there. Um, I think I've come out slightly ahead in that. Uh, so maybe we strike for a little bit. If I wanted to go to the ground, maybe we grapple. Um, if he wants to go to the ground, like I'm not opposed. <laughs> so it doesn't change necessarily the fight camp, but it can change like in the fight some of the thought processes behind where we're going to go win. You know, in today's game of today's age of MMA, I think you have to be an all around fighter, but how important do you think it is to have that skill set of going to the ground? How vital do you think that is for success in today's day of MMA? Uh, I think it's highly vital. I think uh, when you're in the game of MMA, having the thought that, I'm okay if you take me down or if I need it, I can take you down. I think it gives a little bit of freedom to the stand-up game as well, making it to where you don't have to worry about the takedown so much. I can strike, throw kicks however I want, not worried about, oh, if he takes me down, I'm screwed, I'm this or that. I can just kind of let loose, have fun, keep whatever stance I want to keep. And then if the fight starts to go to the ground, know that I have the ability of taking control, taking control once we get there or on the other side, knowing that if I get hurt, there's a good chance I can shoot and make a scramble or get to a situation to become more beneficial to me. Now, a little fun question here. Um, if you could fight or if you could have any sort of BJJ match against any sort of BJJ practitioner, the highest level, who would you choose? That, that's a tough one. I mean, obvious answer is Gordon Ryan just to see what it's like, but he's a little big. Um, I'd still probably stick with Gordon just to get the chance to see what the uh, top is like. Um, and especially in Nogi Jiu-Jitsu, everyone references Gordon as being the best. So having the ability to grapple against him and feel what that's like could probably improve your game tremendously. For me personally, I think it'd be interesting to see you go up against a guy like Brian Ortega, see if you can get out of T-City. That would be another fun one, yeah. So uh, coming up on December 2nd, you're going to be fighting only about an hour from your hometown of DeLand in Orlando. Um, are you excited to be able to fight in front of a Florida audience? Absolutely. Uh, the last time I fought in front of, like, kind of home crowd i think was 2018 maybe 2017 somewhere in there um other than that it's been fighting in like mississippi or the fight on pfl where there was no crowd down in miami um or contender over in vegas with no crowd so i'm excited to have the ability of being close to home have People from the gyms that I train at come out, have the wrestlers that I coach. Some of them are going to come out and watch. Um, so it's going to be exciting to be in front of a home crowd that's cheering loudly for you. And their main focus going to the fights is you. So I'm looking forward to it. Are you expecting to have a bunch of family and friends out to watch you? 
Uh, yeah, I'm expecting to have a pretty good turnout um, from uh, the gym, Dark Wolf MMA, that my parents and I run, from uh, the Fusion Excel family that I got down there in Orlando, uh, the wrestling community that I've been a part of for quite a quite a while here in Florida. Um, like I said, I've been coaching at the Land High, so I've got a bunch of the kids coming out, um, some of my other coaches staff from there, some of the other people I know from different teams. Uh, it's going to be a fun time you know i've been to a couple of icon fc events now and uh your manager levi found and i we always talk about how crazy some of these fights are i mean every time i think i've been to two of them and they're just some very exciting fights and a big part of that is because i, I really like icon's philosophy of stacking the cards very very evenly putting a guy two guys at the same skill level beside each other and just letting them scrap um what do you think of that concept I think it's great. Um, so far, like the fights that have been announced for this fight card, this card looks stacked. It looks like a great time. Uh, I know I've got a friend, uh, Andrew, or uh, Alexander Shank, not Andrew, Alexander Shank, who uh, I coached a little bit in wrestling at the land high briefly, uh, who's fighting on the card. I've got teammates from Fusion that are fighting on the card, all with very tough opponents, very evenly matched and I think it's going to lead to a very exciting card coming uh, December 2nd. Now, do you think that Icon FC allows for a, a foreseeable path for guys to get to the bigger shows like a PFL or a Bellator or a UFC? Absolutely. I feel like uh, Icon has a lot of eyes on it. And I feel like because they throw such exciting uh well-made cards that they, they do get a lot of views a lot of eyes from execs that are looking to pull in talent and they see that there's talent on the card so they end up bringing them in um it also doesn't help when you or uh, doesn't hurt when you have a name like jorge masvidal connected at the top of it to bring eyes in you know it's crazy you mentioned jorge when he first started out i mean there really wasn't anything like this he had a fight in backyards i mean the pathway for him was a lot more difficult than it is now um just overall for the sport how important are leagues such as icon um just for the growth and development of the sport uh they're highly needed you need these organizations that are that kind of mid ground between some of the regional scene and the top level to bridge that gap and make it an easier transition to the top um i've been in the game a long time like i did pancreation and gyms when i was 12 and stuff in california back when some of it was on the low um and through looking through the sport california at first we didn't have like amateur mma so people were just jumping in and we were having to use pancreation which was like no headshots to try to warm people up before sending them to pro when we had our gym out there and now you've got shows everywhere. You've got shows based almost every weekend in different states from some of the lower level shows that they have their fighters. They uh, run good fights, but they don't have some of the attention to some of the bigger regional shows and the mid ground shows where you're getting a lot more eyes on it, a lot more uh, attention from some of the big leagues and it makes it a lot easier for fighters now coming up to get the attention on them that they need to make it to that next level you and your family obviously has been part of this game for a long time um what do you think has led to the vast popularity of the sport you know right now the money is better than it's ever been um there's so many more opportunities to fight as you just mentioned what do you think is making this change um i think just the amount of people starting to get into the sport um i mean when it started you had a few weight classes now there's you added the 125s the 35s the 45s like you've now got the women's divisions that are starting to develop a lot more um that are all just a numbers game bringing in more attention more people that are tuning in um you might have people now that are a little smaller stature like the 25s 35s where they don't fight but seeing people their size putting on performances instead of watching people bigger than them that they're like oh that they're just they're bigger than me i could never do that brings in another clientele that looks and views on as well as just the um the popularity of athletes in general has taken an upturn in multiple sports and a lot of fighters just take it have taken on that role of being big on social media and getting a lot of attention brought to the sport. Uh, 
just again getting more eyes more eyes more eyes and it's been a slow build for the like mma in general from like the early like early days but you can see the progression of it's becoming a lot less about just the fighting now it's about promoting yourself it's about building your fan base it's about getting eyes on everything that you're doing and trying to at times get people to relate to you at times getting people to want you to lose want you to win but i think it's all built together into building up the sport to have as big of a fan base as it has now you know, it was crazy to see when in the 90s when the UFC was just coming out and everything, you had John McCain calling the sport human cockfighting. I mean, no one really understood it. And now it is so culturally acceptive. Uh, do you think the kids, do you think kids are now getting into it? They're starting to watch it at a younger age? Yeah, that's the other part is when the UFC first came out, it was a bunch of adults that were already in their styles that were coming to fight. And as it became popular in probably the uh, like 2000s, like that range, you started to get kids that were growing up wanting to be MMA fighters and making it their goal to train in everything to become MMA fighters. And you're starting to see that wave of fighters that have just grown up in the sport uh, starting to hit the scene a lot more like through these past probably five, five years or so you've seen a lot more um like young athletes coming out with 15 years training and they're only 20 they're uh like not stylistically in one style more of a broad mma knowledge they're joining wrestling teams because they know it'll help them with their fighting they're taking their jiu-jitsu classes at a young age they're striking and i think that's also helped broaden the popularity of the sport is now you have these multi talented uh, athletes coming up at a young age that have just spent so much time in the sport that they're they're already deep into it all right well last question for you christian december 2nd what's the desired outcome for that night and what are you going to have to do to achieve it um i'm gonna go in desired outcome is always i try to finish quick i try to get in I try to get the fights uh, taken care of, whether it's striking or grappling. I'm going to be always looking to finish. That's just the style I take. I don't want to go to decisions. I don't try to go to decisions. When I fight, I try as hard as possible to finish. Just It's how I, I wrestled. It's, I went for the pin every time I didn't try the decision. It's how I do jiu-jitsu matches. I don't try to point. I try to sub. And when I fight, I try to finish as any time, any chance I get, I'm going all out to try to finish. Sometimes it's not worked in my favor and I've gassed out trying to finish too hard too quickly. But I go in and I'm, I'll be going for a first round finish. Christian, thank you for joining me today. Uh, good luck to you on December 2nd. Thank you for having me.